Hello once again. This is the AP Pencrest AP Physics 1 video series. Video 1E, Quantitative Graphical Analysis of Velocity versus Time Graphs. Now, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at, uh, again, velocity versus time graphs that uh, demonstrate several different successive motions. Again, we've seen this before uh, in the position graph. Now we're going to look at a velocity versus time graph that undergoes one type of motion and then another type of motion and then another type of motion and so on. <clears throat> now first, of course, we, uh, we need to begin with the qualitative interpretation of the graph. Um, it's good to know exactly what kinds of motion are represented for each of those uh, intervals. You'll notice that by looking at the changes, these are much easier to determine than they were <clears throat> on the position graph. So you can see very easily when the motion changes. Um, again here it's at 9 seconds and 17 seconds and 22 seconds, much easier than the position versus time graph. So if you want to pause and take a look at each of these and make sure you know what type of motion is represented. Now would be a good time to do that. Now again, uh, recall that this graph does not describe where the object is. It only tells you how fast and which way the object is moving at any particular time. Um, so we'll start with the interpretation of the graph. Um, if you're asked about a particular time, you go to that time along the axis label, go up to the curve, and then read across to the velocity scale. <clears throat> so we'll look at t equals 19 seconds, how fast in which way. We go to 19 seconds, up to the graph, and then over, and we would see that the object is moving uh, 30 meters per second. <clears throat> that is positive. It's above the time axis, so it is moving to the right. Uh, the plus is implied, so 30 meters per second as your answer is sufficient. Uh, we can also use this graph to find the acceleration in any interval. Uh, simply put, the acceleration in any interval is the slope of the graph in that interval. Uh, does make it a little bit easier that uh, the velocity graph is all straight line segments. We will not be dealing with curving velocity graphs in this course. Now acceleration is defined as the change in velocity divided by time, which is exactly what the slope formula looks like in this case. We have A equals delta V over delta T. That's rise over run. V final, or VF minus VI, initial, over TF minus TI, final and initial times for the interval. So we'll try the first interval, which is 0 to 9 seconds. <clears throat> we're going to say that this value here, tough to interpret precisely, but we're going to say that it's 54 meters per second. When we do the calculation, again, delta V over delta T, here's our final velocity, here's our initial velocity, and then here's the time interval, 9 minus 0 seconds. We end up with <clears throat> 6 meters per second squared as the acceleration in the first interval. When you do this calculation, uh, take a good look at what your work should look like. You should have a formula. You should have the data substituted in with the units. Notice the units here for each quantity. And notice that um, the units produce the desired answer, uh, the expected units for acceleration, meters per second squared. Now, going back to the graph, Take a look at the acceleration in this interval, 34 to 42 seconds, 49 to 60 seconds, 9 to 17 seconds. If you want to pause the video, if you're watching this on your own, pause the video and take a look at those. That would be a good time. So here's our answers. <clears throat> 34 to 42 seconds, negative 9.25 meters per second squared. I cut it off at 3. Uh, significant figures in each case. 
49 to 60 seconds is 6.73 meters per second squared. And in this interval, 9 to 17 seconds at zero, <clears throat> there is no acceleration. You might have known that just by looking at this graph, knowing that this is plus CV, or positive constant velocity, um, <clears throat> you've been able to tell that the acceleration in this inter interval is zero because there is no slope. And also, <clears throat> constant velocity implies that there is no acceleration. All right, now, uh, moving on, it's uh, already been stated that this velocity versus time graph doesn't tell us anything about where the object is at any time, but we can use it to determine how far an object moves in a given interval. Okay, so we can find its displacement in a given interval, even if we don't know where it is, just by calculating the area between the curve and the time axis, which of course is where v equals zero. <clears throat> so the displacement in an interval is equal to the area under the v versus t curve. <clears throat> you have to be careful about where the time axis actually is. Okay, in this case, of course, we look for the zero on the velocity axis, and this red line represents the time axis. So we're going to take a look at uh, the first interval, which is between 0 and 9 seconds. The area we need is indicated by this black triangle. All right, so this is the area we need to calculate. The area of the triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. But we have to be careful to use the scales on the axes when we measure the base and the height. Okay, for this triangle, the base is 9 seconds. In the height of the triangle, we have to use the scale, not the number of blocks. So we go to the scale and we see that the height of the triangle is 54 meters per second using the scale. And of course, the units are going to matter. <coughs> Again, a typical error is just to count the blocks on the graph and ignore the scale. That would mess up your answer. So here's our area calculation, one-half base times height. The base, again, is 9 seconds. The height is 54 meters per second. The seconds cancel. We multiply the numbers, and we end up with 243 meters as the area of the triangle. Now, again, this is, uh, we got to be clear on what this means. We don't know where the object is at this point in time. But we do know that in the first interval from 0 to 9 seconds, the object moves 243 meters to the right. Okay, we know its displacement in that interval. We don't know, don't know exactly where it is, but we know how far it moved. How would we know, by the way, that the object moved to the right? <clears throat> first of all, the displacement, first of all, the 243 meters is positive, which tells us it's to the right. Also, the graph, when we look at that first interval, this is plus plus a, so we know that the object is moving to the right because this entire section of the graph is above the time axis, which is here. So again, we know it's moving to the right. So now we'll determine the displacement of the object in the second interval, which is from 9 to 17 seconds. Again, this rectangle shows the area that we need to calculate. Rectangles are easier, uh, simply base times height. Again, we've got to be careful about the height using the scale on the velocity axis. Here's the base, 8 seconds. Here's the height. And we see that in the second interval, the object moved 432 meters to the right. Okay? Now, again, if the area between the velocity curve and the time axis is above the time axis, we know that the displacement is positive, and therefore the object is moving to the right. If the area is below the time axis, in this graph that you're looking at here, uh, any area that we calculate after 34 seconds, uh, the area between the curve and the time axis would be below the time axis. And we know that the object then would be moving to the left, and then the displacement, therefore, would be negative and to the left. Okay? Now, if we look at the interval from 42 to 49 seconds, uh, the area is measured to the time axis. So, in this case, we would measure this area here, 
Okay, again, measured in this case up to the time x is here. Okay, we make the height of the rectangle negative based on the scale. <clears throat> and this way, the area is base times height. Here's the base. The height taken from the graph is negative. And then we get a negative displacement, which we would expect because the object is moving to the left. Okay? Now, when we determine the displacement over a given interval, uh, there's no guarantee that the shape that we have to calculate the area of will be as simple as we've seen. Uh, we may need to break up the area into a combination of rectangles or triangles or both in order to determine the area. Okay, for example, uh, this is a pretty complicated situation here. We, we want the uh, displacement of the object in the interval between 18 to 38 seconds. So here's my time axis. And this red shape indicates the area that we need to calculate. It's pretty complicated. We need to break it up, right? So we need to break it up into a combination of rectangles and triangles. Uh, we would then calculate each area and then add them up. One possibility is shown here. I've got a big rectangle, another big rectangle, small rectangle, small triangle, bigger triangle. Um, there are other ways that you could break up this area and still be able to calculate it. If you want to give it a shot, now would be a good time to pause. Okay, as it turns out, the total area is negative 262 meters in this interval of time. Okay? So again, we don't know, using these graphs, we don't know where an object is but we might be given the object's position at a particular time and be asked where it is some time later or even earlier. Uh, in these cases, we would determine the area under the curve and either add for later or subtract for earlier from the given position. Okay, we might, for example, if we go back to that graph we just looked at, it might give us a position at t equals 18 seconds and ask us where the object would be at 38 seconds. We would then add the displacement to the position at 18 seconds to figure out the final position at 38 seconds. Okay? Now, to summarize, given a velocity versus time graph, uh, with scales, you would need to determine the velocity at any time, the acceleration in any given interval, the displacement in any given interval, and the position at any time, but only if you're given the position at one other time on the graph. Okay, so that's going to do it for velocity versus time. Until next time, I'll see you again soon.